This is the first video in our Gospel According to Luke series, and today we're going to be looking at Mary's song, The Magnificat, which is in Luke chapter 1. Be sure to subscribe, stay up to date on the Gospel According to Luke series. So let's get going. I want you to think about a sporting event, right? At some point in the game, one of the coaches is going to call a timeout. So Mary's song functions in a similar fashion. Luke brings the events of chapter one to a halt to draw out the meaning and the significance of these events and the events to come in the rest of the book. And he uses Mary's song to accomplish that. So let's get into the text here. As we dive into her song, a core theme emerges that stretches throughout Luke's two-part volume of Luke Acts. And that theme is God's favor towards the lowly. And you can see this in verse 48. She marvels that God would look upon her favorably given her status. Now, she isn't being pious when she uses the language of humble or lowly. She's actually being quite literal. Elsewhere in Luke, this word characterizes the poor, those of low status in honor. As scholar Joel Green says, her favorable status, which is asserted by Gabriel, confirmed by Elizabeth, and now embraced by Mary herself, is a consequence solely of God's surprising grace. So now that we have that, let's zoom out because Mary's song links us in two different directions within the grand narrative of scripture. First, her song connects us to the covenant-making God in Genesis. Her final words, verses 54 and 55, she says, He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. So this line spotlights the fact that God's miraculous work in and through Mary is grounded in God's character. He's a covenant-making God, and he commits to his promises, and Mary benefits from that fact. And second, we can see how Luke paints her song almost like a collage. Core themes and ideas from Old Testament songs are interwoven here in Luke chapter 1, which allows us to see the meaning of her song more clearly. So for example, think of Moses' song, Miriam, Deborah, Asaph, and most notably here is Hannah's song from 1 Samuel. So Mary's song here in Luke chapter 1 is intertwined with the melodies of men and women who came before her, who celebrated God's might in delivering his people. So how is Mary's song meaningful to you and me? Now, it goes without saying the significance of Mary's song stretches far beyond the points that I've spotlighted here. Nonetheless, we can see already that Mary's song instructs followers of Jesus to hold in faith two points. So number one, the God of scripture is a divine warrior who delivers his people from affliction. And yet number two, this divine warrior is simultaneously rich in mercy. He acts compassionately toward the poor and lowly, and he does so because of his covenant faithfulness. And this is no more clearly seen than in the life of Christ, where Jesus showed compassion for the poor and lowly by clothing himself in the rags of a servant. And by his obedience, we're witnesses of the fact that the divine warrior delivered his covenant people through Jesus' death and victorious resurrection. 